Welcome back to PSC Tech Byte. Today I want to talk with you about the PMP provisioning schema. In fact, whenever we use the PMP provisioning engine, we rely on an XML schema to represent the artifacts that we want to provision. And the XML schema is used not only in the .xml files, but also in the .pmp files, which are just open XML files, which include an XML-based file, which will describe the provisioning artifact. From an engine perspective, right now in the provisioning engine, we support schema version 2019.03, but we just released version 2019.09, so September 2019, and we have a plan to most likely support at the engine level the functionality introduced with the new schema by October or November this year. So what are those functionalities? First of all, we introduced at schema level support for vertical sections in client-side pages. Moreover, we have support for OneDrive for Business files and folders upload. We support synchronization of user profile properties in the SharePoint online user profile. We have a new site setting section together with the already existing web settings one. We have properties and settings to configure the groups, uh, Office 365 groups lifecycle management, as well as the tenant wide level settings for Office 365 groups. We have attachments for uh, list items in data rows, uh, and we have uh, support for content types uh, and properties for folders in data rows, so that we can upload and create uh, during the provisioning uh, uh, folders with specific content type, like for example, document sets, uh, settings, the properties of the document sets. So let's move to the demo environment and let me show you what we have right now at schema level only. And as I said, from a functional perspective, the engine will support these functionalities in the upcoming month. So here we have uh, an XML sample file, uh, which is first of all uh, based on the new uh, PMP provisioning schema version. So the namespace will be 2019.09. As usual, we use just this uh, part of the uh, schema namespace uh, to identify the schema version. Moreover, at the XML level, we have, for example, a new section called PMP drive, through which you can define multiple drive root elements, which will be made of drive items, which can be folders or files that you want to upload in a folder or in the root folder. Uh, by providing the folder drive folder element, you can provide a source folder, which will become uh, the content uh, that will be uploaded onto the target uh, folder in OneDrive for Business, or you can just specify the uh, single files that you want to upload. When you use a full uh, uh, folder as the source, you can also specify at schema level which files to include and which files to exclude during the bulk import of that folder. From a user profile, SharePoint user profile perspective, in the tenant element, we introduced at schema level <coughs> a new element called uh, SP user profiles, through which we declare what are the properties that we want to sync uh, for a specific user or for a group of users, so that those properties will be applied uh, in the SharePoint online user profile uh, repository for all of the members of the target group. Moreover, we have uh, the Office 365 Group Lifecycle Policy that we can define. And for example, when we declare a policy, we can later on use that policy when we create a site collection and we associate the site collection with that specific policy. Moreover, we have uh, still in the tenant section, the Office 365 Group Settings through which we will be able to define the properties that we can configure in Azure Active Directory, like for example, the list of classification uh, values that we want to have at tenant level, the default classification, the usage guideline URL whenever a user creates a new site, and so on, so forth. As I said, we introduced also not only the web setting, which was already there, but also a site setting section, which will contain the settings uh, for the site collection we're going to provision. And in the data rows, uh, let me search for them, data rows, uh, we introduce support uh, for attachments which can be specified providing the source file name and the target file name of the attachment that will be created and we can eventually overwrite uh, the files as well as we have support for folders and uh, from a folder perspective we can provide uh, a folder content type uh, here it is an example as well as a set of properties for the folder last but not least uh, 
we improve the uh, settings and the attributes for teams so that now we better support uh, the delta changes uh, for teams that we provision using the provisioning engine and we added support for the discovery settings uh, so that in the near future we will be able to support that functionality as well when we set up a new team in Microsoft Teams. All these new uh, features and capabilities, as I said, are supported at schema level only right now and the engine level support will come in the upcoming month. In the meantime, I'd really like to thank all of the people from the community who contributed to the definition of this new schema engine, providing new ideas, new requirements to make the schema more and more complete. So thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.